Hello, Glastonbury. <laughs> no, I know it's not really. Um, oh, I love the echo. I want to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Ian Dunn. Ian B. Dunn is the whole of my name. I'm very lucky. I get to go all over the country, and occasionally other countries as well, going on about science and stuff. I'm basically a recruiting sergeant. I go to schools and science festivals and goodness knows what else, trying to get kids interested. And this is a stripped-down version of a talk that I often do at secondary level and for the general public. Mm. I call it Science Magic Magic Science. It's not like a talk I saw a few years ago. I saw a guy do a talk that he called the magic of science, and he basically droned on for an hour and a half until half the audience were asleep, and I think one guy pretended to be dead to get out of the room. <laughs> it was that bad. Not like, I'm sure none of the talks here are like that at all, although I'm a first-timer here, so it's quite exciting. Um, ooh, it's exciting as well, isn't it? Um, my talk is about bits of science that look like magic or have been used as conjuring tricks. A lot has, okay? Um, imagine it's a couple of hundred years ago and I came here and I said to you, I have magic powers. You would probably go, go on then, prove it. And I would say, yeah, you see this ordinary bar of metal, ordinary bar of metal, you could buy a bar of metal like this on your way home. So a lot of you are probably very familiar with this metal, we call it aluminium. However, due to the fact that I've got magic powers, I can do something unusual to it. Hopefully. Come on. I can make it sing just by touching it. But because I'm a very powerful magician, I only can make it sing. I can make it scream. And I can keep this up for hour after hour after hour after hour until your little brain goes all runny and comes out of your ears. Because I can make it go, and only I can make it stop. Now, it is very easy to do. Obviously, it's no magic trick, it's a science trick. You could learn to do it. After an hour's practice, you'll be able to annoy your entire family. <laughs> your dog will be lying on the floor going, ah! Because it makes his doggy brain shake inside his doggy head. Um, Basically, you hold it in the middle, where you rub it. When you rub it, you put some energy in, it resonates, okay? Different lengths give you different notes. Um, people have made musical instruments out of this. I like the noise this one makes. But then again, that's because I can't hear all of it. You see, as you get older, some bad things happen. And one of them is, you go deaf. And lots of the noises this makes, I can no longer hear. But young people can. Which is great, it means I can torture kids. Which is some compensation. Right, I haven't got long, so I'll be quick. Um, look, this, ooh, this is similar. This is a Tibetan singing bowl. You make it sing by running the bit of wood around the edge. Now, if you go on the internet, you'll find lots of websites that will tell you that is a really healing noise. And I thought, it's just a metal bowl. Will others do it? And the answer is, yes, they will. I came across these two in a charity shop. They're silver plated, but they're just made of brass, really. But this will also make a very, you can use a wooden spoon handle for that, but this will also make a very, Come on. Healing noise. And this one, being a different shape, makes a different very... Healing noise. And if you rub them together, they make an absolutely beautiful... Healing noise. So now you can annoy your whole family just using cheap junk. It's immensely satisfying. Uh, where am I going? Over here. When you play the violin, the reason you get beautiful music out of the violin is as the bow moves over the strings and makes the strings resonate, and then the box resonates too, and you get all that lovely music. I am not going to play the violin at you because it would contravene your human rights. I'm rubbish on the violin. Instead, I'm going to play this rather lovely saw. I used to use this for the saw in the lady in half trick, but I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Health and safety. And uh, please excuse the way I play the sort. I know most people play sitting down. I always have to play standing up. Or... Spooky. That is actually useful. That is really handy at Halloween. You know when you get all those horrible little trick-or-treaters knock on your door? <laughs> Trick-or-treat, give me some sweets, I'm going to smash your windows! If you open the front door and you're standing there like this. 
they all run away screaming. Brilliant. Lowest notes about here. Highest about here. Oh, do you like that one? Okay. No, I won't be cruel. I haven't got long, I'll be quick. Um, it's very easy to play the saw, provided you're strong enough to bend it. This one is a bit bigger than the ordinary saw, and it's quite a lot bendier. This is still sharp, but this is actually made for playing. There's a label on there, and it says Sandvik Stradivarius. <laughs> Just two. And there's a picture of somebody playing the saw. The thing is, the person in the picture, it looks to me like they're not actually wearing any clothes. I think that's a bad idea, don't you? One twang to be, ah! You get to the hospital, they say, how did you do that? Always playing the saw with no clothes on. Going to be there a long time. Right, you can go back down there. Um, this, whoa, it's downhill. This is actually a musical instrument as well. This is a thing called a theremin. With a bit of luck, when I turn it on, something will happen. Nothing happens. My theremin has, oh! It's that. At least you're working. Right. Whoa. Every time you set these up, they're different. Mm. Oh dear. Excuse me. Mm. Oh, that's worse. Oh, I've broken it. Mm. Pardon? Mm. Tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, going back there. Right. When I get nearer to it, with a bit of luck, it will make a noise. Ooh, glossy crackle. Um, you can go like this. That one does pitch, this one does volume. You get the idea. The guy who invented this was actually trying to make a metal detector. I think it's telling stuff is close together. So you could use one as a car alarm. You put one on your car, somebody goes walking past your car. You can do impressions. Here's an impression of a car. <laughs> Little birdie. <laughs> Mosquito. People that are good at it can make it sound like it's talking. I can just about manage hello. You can go. <laughs> you get the idea. Sadly, not used a lot in music anymore. It used to be used a lot in the uh, 1950s in some of the great science fiction films like The Day the Earth Stood Still. And you can imagine in my film, you have the hero walking along the long, dark corridor. And at the end of the long, dark corridor is the laboratory. And in that laboratory is the monster. And hopefully, it would go like this. So he gets to the end of the corridor, he puts his hand on the door handle, it goes like this. He opens the door, it goes like this. And the monster goes... <laughs> to mutated pepper pig. <laughs> ah! Just to prove it is such an instrument, I will attempt to play Happy Birthday. If it's your birthday today, then this is for you. Oh, better move him, actually. Oh, I ought to introduce you to my little friend here. I don't know if you can see him, but it's, um, this is my little cat. He's a robotic cat called Cat. And hope... Yeah, imagine his name, isn't it? Hopefully, if I turn him on, he'll do something. Oh, are you alive? 
So, so oh, what, what are you doing? Are you can make a noise. No. That'll have to do. Right, so I've trained you to count, okay? Not yet. I've trained you to count. How many fingers am I holding up? How many fingers? No, not that one. How many fingers? No. How many fingers? How many fingers? One. No, more than one, come on. <laughs> come on! I'm going to reprogram you with an axe, come on. Come on. We have a good day. You're just sulking. Oh, I'm holding up three fingers. You can see the three fingers. Meow. Meow. Come on, more than that, come on. How many? One. Two. Well done. Are you going to behave? Or do you want to go back in your box? Do you want to go back in your box? Meow. Are you going to behave? Are you going to behave? You going to behave? Come on. Oh, you're purring. All right. I'll take that as you're going to behave then, are you? Okay, right. I'm going to leave him on. He's... I'm never quite sure what he's going to do. It's half the fun. Um, oh. For my next trick, I'm going to use... For my next trick, I'm going to do this. Here I have a classic magic trick. I will attempt some actual magic tricks. I am rubbish at them, but we'll have a go. Empty bowl, completely and utterly empty bowl. There is nothing in that bowl but a few billionaire molecules all having a nice little dance. I place the bowl on the table. I, pl I place the lid on the bowl. I say the magic word, blah. I take the lid off. No, look, there's stuff in there. If you can't work out how that works, get professional help. <laughs> Traditionally, this is called a chick pan, by the way, because you're supposed to stuff it with little chicks. You can get a bigger one called a dove pan, you're supposed to put, put pigeons in, but I think that's cruel. I put rope in mine, and it leads me into my next trick, which is called the cut rope restored. The idea is I will cut the rope in half and magically join it back together again. That's the idea. Just before I do, I need a brave volunteer to check it's one piece of rope. I need somebody over here. I can... Could you check that it's one piece of rope for me? Please do not eat it. Do not tie anybody up. Do not strangle anybody. Uh, all that sort of thing. Convinced it's one piece of rope? May I have my rope back, please? Chuck it over here. Go on. Chuck it, chuck, 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 chuck. <laughs> I'm drowning! I'm dead. <laughs> well done. Right. There's one end. I'll go back over here now. Oh. There's one end. There's the other end. I place them. Are you still alive? I place them in both hands. I take the middle. I place the middle in the same hand because I only have two hands. Now I need to find my scissors. I'm afraid I'm not allowed to let you touch the scissors. Health and safety. You see, they're pointy. And for all I know, you're not allowed pointy. You might go, oh, pointy. Like pointy. <laughs> and that'd be bad. So we won't do that. Right, cut the rope. Right, there's one piece of rope. There's the other piece of rope. I take the two free ends, I tie them into a nice little knot. It's at this point I need to say, does anybody know any magic words? But, oh, very good. You were listening. Abracadabra is an interesting one. Thought, once upon a time we thought it was Arabic, but it turns out it's not. Nobody knows where it's from. Tell you what, I haven't got long, so I'd better carry on. Um, I want you to pick your favourite magic word, okay? And after three, I'd like you to say your favourite magic word. One, two, nothing rude from the back, all right? One, two, three. And again, one, two, three. And again, one, two, three. That'll do. Well, then, right. This is where it all goes horribly wrong due to the fact I'm rubbish. What I'm doing now, by the way, is the third most important thing you need to know as a magician. It's very technical. It's called wasting time. I do it a lot, honest. But hopefully through the science of magic, magical science, take one piece of rope, cut it in half, and magically join it back together again. Exciting, isn't it? Can I have my rope back, please? I don't know if I got away with that. Oh. oh, thank you very much. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, all right, Kitty. Yep. Now, if I was a proper magician, which you probably noticed I'm really not, I wouldn't tell you how I did that, but I will tell you. I lied to you. I didn't really cut it in half. I just cut the end off and tied it around so it looked like a knot. You'd be amazed how many people go, Hold on, you showed us two pieces of rope. I'm sorry, if you think that, your own brain is lying to you. 
That's how psychics get away with their nonsense, by the way. No, I just tied it around, and then when I threw it across the room, I put this little bit in my pocket. So I went like that, and you went, oh, the rope's going over there. And this hand went like, ha, ha. And that's how magic tricks work. They lie to you, they get you to look the wrong way, and they waste as much time as possible. And in case you're wondering, that goes in there, and then that goes in there. Oh, uh, another quick magic trick before I do something electrical. Here I have a beautiful, mysterious and strange hat. What do magicians pull out of hats? Rabbits. Good answer. Much better than the kid the other week that went, uh, broccoli? <laughs> there is something under the hat. Don't worry, I will introduce you properly in a moment. Here I have my beautiful hat. I need somebody just to check there's no rabbit in the hat. Oh, all right, could you check there's no rabbit in the hat for me, please? Over there, could you just check this bunny-free zone? Convinced no bunnies in there, are they? No, not one. Not even a single bunny rabbit right over here. I place the hat on the table. I take my trusty metal bar. Hello. There was a rabbit in the hat. It's now a fairly boneless bunny. This is honestly how it's done, all right? Oh, look, there's a rabbit in the hat. <laughs> it's rubbish, isn't it? Now, obviously, it's not a real rabbit, and you should never hold a real rabbit by his ears, in case you're wondering why. It's very simple. It's because they're his ears. <laughs> if this was a real rabbit, he'd be in agony by now. He'd be kicking and all sorts. <laughs> Come on, run. 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 <laughs> you're all right down here, aren't you? Rubbish uphill. All right. Real reason I showed you the rabbit, you look probably understand. If I'd showed people the rabbit like this 200 years ago, or that cat, people would go, oh my word, I don't like the look of that. That looks like evil magic. I think that bloke's a witch. Let's burn him. But of course, he's not evil magic, no. He is science harnessed for the good of mankind, and since you check the hat, would you like to give him a little stroke? <laughs> Devil bunny. Oh, back over here now. Oh, he's walking uphill. Right. You go there, killer bunny. I can put you there. Oh, hello. Still there. Oh. I ought to introduce you to Annie. Uh, it's not a real human skull. I'm sure it's no surprise, but I've got a 3D printer. I've just built another one, in fact. Um, and she's called Annie, which has got nothing to do with the fact that it's my mother-in-law's name. <laughs> nothing! Um, and I printed her, and she took about 30 hours for the main skull. Pretty good. And I've articulated her, so I can use her as a ventriloquist dummy. I can go... Hello, Annie. Hello. Are you well? Yeah. Do you want to go to a party later? No, I hate parties. Why? Because I've got nobody to go with. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I put some electronics in her, so let's have a look. All right. Are you having a nice time? Are you having a nice time? Ooh. Oh, you don't, I don't like this one. This is a new circuit I put in this one, and she's going to copy me. And it's rubbish! Oh, you're going to do it again now. La la la, come on, let's do the proper one, shall we? Do you, are you having a nice time? Oh, you're going to do it again now. How oh, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. La la la, come on, let's yeah, do the yeah, yeah, yeah. one, Are you having a nice time? Yeah. Good. <laughs> do you want to go back in your box? <laughs> Hours of fun. Uh, and you can obviously introduce us to people as well. You can go, hello. Oh, she likes you. Doesn't like everybody. Do something else. Oh, that's better. Ah. All right, you go on there. No. Oh. oh, don't fall over. That's all we need. Right. Oh. They've got the same central nervous system, so they do talk to each other. For my next trick, I'm going to use this beautiful yet strange and expensive glass of water on top of which I'm going to place this beautiful yet strange and expensive postcard. On top of which I'm going to place three of these beautiful yet strangely inexpensive things. On top of which I'm going to place three of these beautiful yet strangely inexpensive eggy wiggies. Yeah. The idea of this trick is using not one, not two, but all three of Newton's laws of motion. I will pull the postcard and the egg should fall unbroken into the glass. That's the idea. I used to do this with one egg, but it always worked. So then I started doing it with three eggs. It doesn't always work. I find the stress terrible. 
I'll just quickly show you something else first. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? I forgot to pick something up. I need. What am I looking for? Come on, there you come. Not that one. For my next trick, I'm going to use this. If I can find a decent one, good grief. Where are they all gone? For my next trick, I'm going to use this incredibly terrifying balloon. Okay? They all work by electricity. Electricity is the nearest thing I know to real magic. Before I do anything with electricity, I need to give you my standard safety warning. Don't plug yourself in. The electricity going through the lights in here, there's easily enough to kill everybody in the room. Which is all right with you, I'm not going to prove. So obviously you'd all be dead, and I'd have to leave the country again in a hurry again. Very embarrassing. Now I'm sure I don't need to explain to you that there's kind of electricity everywhere, and I'm going to try and take some electricity out of the balloon. Not by plugging it in, that would be stupid. You can do it by rubbing on your hair, you can even do it by rubbing on a cat, but they really don't like it. I'm going to do it by rubbing it with this cloth. Now hopefully, the cloth is taking some electricity off the balloon, so the balloon hasn't quite got enough, and with a bit of luck it will stick to my doodle. It's going to stick. There are two explanations of why it sticks. First, a sciencey one. I have removed electricity from it, so it hasn't quite got enough. It is trying to get electricity off the screen. That means you end up with a force holding it on. Now the non-sciencey one. It's being held up by a little fairy. <laughs> you can believe that if you like. Oh, still alive, good. This is not a lightsaber. It's a bit of plastic. But when I rub this with the same cloth, this actually gets a bit too much electricity. That balloon hasn't quite got enough. So with a bit of luck, I now have bit too much, not quite enough, not quite enough, bit too much. Bring them together, and hopefully something interesting will happen. Come on. Not pop, float. So the balloon is being attracted to the rod. The balloon's going, oh, you are an attractive rod. Oh, Roddy, I think you're lovely. Give us a kiss. In theory, with enough electricity, you could make people float around the room. Slight problem, they would explode. It'd look good though, wouldn't it? Everybody go, look at that, he's floating around the room. Bang! <laughs> that was a bit of me hair. Right, you go down there. This is a Victorian invention called a Wimshurst machine. Hopefully, if I turn it on, oh, well, turn the handle, it makes lightning. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is he going to put his finger in there? And the answer is no. He doesn't like pain. Now, for the next bit, you're going to have to excuse me. I'm going to be kind to the BAV people. I'm going to take my microphone off because there's just a slight chance that one of my toys might interfere with it. So I'm going to have to rely on shouting. Oh, why is he going like that? Why are you going like that? OK. OK. You heard him. You can't sue. <laughs> this is a Van de Graaff generator. Um, Lots of schools have got these. Normally they're small and they're rubbish and they don't work very well. This is the third largest one I've ever seen and it's mine. Very simple. Big rubber band goes round and round. No electronics, no nothing. Driven by an electric motor, this one. You don't need an electric motor. You could make one of these powered by a hamster wheel. It would still work. This bit is insulated so I won't get a shock. But with a bit of luck we should get some interesting sparks. What's my heart? Now, you might think, Sparks, can you do anything else? Yes, you can. Oh, right, boys. Look go, right. This is Snakey, the electric snake. Look, he wants to play. So I can let him. I can go, Snakey. Rise. Snakey. Follow the rod. Follow the rod. Follow the rod. Attack the rod. Now, Snakey doesn't care if it's the rod or my hand. He will go for the nearest thing. So if I'm careful, I should be able to get him to follow my hand. Now, it's normally about now when some kind person in the audience goes, What happens if you touch it? Would you like to see what happens? OK. Oh, if you're ever worried about getting an electric shock, 
An old electrician's trick is to put your other hand in your pocket so the electricity will not cross your heart. It's still going to hurt, but it probably won't kill you. <laughs> ah! ah! In fact, look. <laughs> this is high voltage, low current, which is why I can do this. Oh, yeah. The problem is it's a bit sweaty in here. My hands aren't going to work terribly well. My elbow normally should work a bit better. Come on, bite me. Come on. And now on a good day, I can get a lot bigger sparks than that. And you're probably thinking, does it hurt? I don't know. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> it's the only fun I get these days, high-voltage electricity and beer. Oh, no. Um, if this was mains electricity, my arm would be on fire. It'd be good from your point of view, though, wouldn't it? Oh, that was so funny. When he set fire to himself. If I put my hand on, I am charging up, but it's going really quick. This, this, come on out you come. Where's your other end? This is Squiddy, the electric squid. Ah, oh, I can't see what I'm doing. Right, not you then. Let's try this one, that one's better. Come on, Squiddy. These people have got things to do, they don't hang around for you. <coughs> Squiddy, rise. Is that it? <laughs> that was rubbish! Call yourself a tissue paper life form. Oh, my word, it's falling apart. I just pulled his leg off. Hold on a Strange enough, they are quite easy to make. Let's try that again, shall we, Squiddy? <laughs> Attack! This is an ostrich feather. I'm not sure this is going to work in here. Oh. No, you're charging up. It's funny, those. No, on a good day you can get them to fly, but you're not going to do it, are you? No, it's your rubbish. This. Come on, out you come. This is a bit of loo roll in short supply at festivals. With these, it's very handy for your Jedi training. You can go, use the force. <laughs> back to me, back to me. <laughs> if your loo roll ever attacks you, run around screaming. These, if I can find them. These are pie tins. No, I did not eat all the pies. You can get them empty. But I'd like to do for you attack of the flying saucers. Oh no, here come the flying saucers! Sadly, I'm no longer allowed to electrocute living human beings. Sorry, but no. However, I have got with me my beautiful assistant. I have... Stunt Barbie. <laughs> Dancing hair. See her hair? See my finger? That's because there's electricity going through space between me and Barbie, which we're not going to think about. Um, that's a Tesla coil. No, sorry, that is a Van de Graaff generator. I have got a Tesla coil with me. It's only a little one, but it is cute. Um, of course, Tesla was the greatest inventor, much better than Edison, wasn't he? This is a cute little one. This one produces about a million volts worth of electricity turning off about 300,000 times a second. So I feel I want to show you what that looks like. So, turn that on. What? Work. What? What's happened? Oh. Can you believe it? A battery's gone. That's not going to work, is it, Done. Oh, there we go. Amazing. Hit things. So, a million volts turning off 300,000 times a second looks roughly like this. This is nice. You are not falling off the table.
See if you recognise this one. Four seconds late. One, two, three. Uh, oh, only, uh, only Seth can do that particular trick. And in case you're wondering, it is a light bulb. And this is a kit. You could get one of these and build it. And then you could absolutely terrify your cat. <laughs> ah! Oh, how... Oh, I wonder how I'm doing for time. Right, I better do this, though. But first, this... I am not trying to hypnotise you. I do not want you to spend all your, all your money in a big pile by the door, no. I want you to stare into the heart of the 20, 20 words of doom. This in effect, well, you might start to see colours. Red, green, blue. Then again, you might not. If you're thinking of looking away, don't. Because by now, your brain should be about cooked. So, so, look at my head. Look at that. This is an effect called the waterfall effect, and it was noticed by an artist who spent hours looking at a waterfall when he could have been doing something useful. But when he looked away, it looked like everything was going up. It is caused by the hundred billion brain cells in your head being very clever but ever so lazy. This time, don't look at me. This time, look at the person next to you. Oh, how are we this time? I've overrun, so I'm not right. Okay. I can tell you a lot of people got interesting places to go to, and frankly, I could do with a beer. So, I will finish the trick, okay? One. Nobody going to count? All right, it's my talk. I'll do the count, and I don't care anyway. Two. Three. Four. Three. Two. One. Duck! Duck! All right, I will carry on. Okay, don't blink. You might miss it. La 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 la. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been an excellent audience. I wish all my audiences were as lovely as you. But on behalf of myself, uh, Ian B. Dunn, my duck, my bunny rat, my snake, my squid, my cat, my skull, and the beautiful Barbie. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. I've got to put it all away now. Right. Ooh. <laughs>